So if you're a retiree living on a fixed income and are also seeing how your monthly check can't keep up with the rising cost of living, well, there is some good news that I want to share with you. And I want to ask you a question real quick. Do you have any rewards credit cards? And if so, have you ever considered using the rewards benefits to supplement your income? Credit card rewards and cashback programs are often unreported forms of passive income, a hack that the rich use that they don't want us to know about. So please comment down below and let me know. Folks, welcome back to the channel. Please subscribe to the channel and give this video a like. Turn on notifications so you'll receive alerts when new information is uploaded and shared, which is designed to help you and discover the most accurate, up-to-date, and helpful information in new videos to see you gain access to additional resources to help cope and survive through these tough and difficult financial economic times, as well as future updates on benefits aid packages, social security, SSA, disability, SSI, and SSDI, EBT, food stamps, PEBT allotments, free money through government grants and other supplemental stimulus programs coming, and so much more. All right, guys, I don't like doing long intros, so let's get right into the video that you came to see. So if you're a retiree living on a fixed income and are also seeing how your monthly check can't keep up with the rising cost of living, well, there is some good news that I want to share with you. So to help you and millions of other fixed income and government dependent Americans maintain purchasing power, the Social Security Administration, the SSA, has raised benefit amounts again for this year. Now, this increase to check totals and direct deposits is evaluated annually and adjustments are made via a cost of living adjustment, COLA. With the next major increase to be seen on your January 2023 Social Security check, and if you want to know how to get more money and increased values of checks, then pay close attention to what I have to share with you. These hacks are being used to help offset and supplement the high and constantly increasing cost of living, which as we all know, the cost of living is the amount of money you have to spend on essentials, everyday purchases to live in your area. The factors that affect the cost of living adjustments and the expenses categories that are typically considered part of your cost of living are as follows. Housing, rent and mortgage payments, food, clothing, health care, education and transportation. And according to the 2021 data from the Bureau of Labor Statistics, the average cost of living in America is a little over $62,000 per year per household or over $5,100 or so a month. So we can all use some helpful tips and tricks to budget wisely and overcome these struggling burdens on us all. So please give this video a like if you're interested in learning about additional monies that can be coming your way and ways to make those monies stretch further. I just want to get a gauge of how many folks watching are being impacted and affected by these increased and continuously increasing costs in our economy, and especially those costs tied so heavily to basic daily necessities and essentials like housing, rent and mortgage payments, food, clothing, healthcare, education, and transportation. And of course, your specific cost of living will vary by where in the country you live. So for folks who live in Hawaii, for example, will typically see a rise in essential purchases cost nearly twice as much as in the continental U.S. And in terms of housing, the Hawaiian islands have limited land. So real estate is more expensive there than in a large continental state like New Mexico, for example. Plus, since Hawaii has to import most of its goods from the mainland, food costs more than in farm-heavy Midwestern states like Kansas. Yet the main question that is on a lot of people's minds is perhaps the most important to be answered. And that is, how can credit card rewards and cashback programs be leveraged and used as unreported forms of passive income, a hack that the rich use that they don't want us to know about? So I just want to let you all know that these are helpful, real life tips from personal experience of my own, as my mother is a Social Security recipient on a fixed budget and a caregiver to my 96 year old grandmother in an area that has experienced extremely high price increases accompanied by the recent and rapid growth in the area that they live in. So needless to say, times can get a little tough and money needs to be stretched often to make ends meet. And although there have been some recent increases to monthly check totals and the extra money provided from the COLA increase will certainly help extend your buying power, we know on its own it is less likely to keep your wallet in check with the increased prices on the shelves. So these tips can help ensure your higher Social Security check goes as far as possible this year. So first, 
we like to start by taking a look at what options exist out there in the world of credit card rewards. So just to be 100% transparent, rewards credit cards can save you money, but they also have annual fees that can cost hundreds of dollars. That's why it's a good idea to check annually whether your rewards card is still right for you, especially if your spending habits have changed. And rewards cards typically offer cash back on purchases or alternatively, points or air miles that can be redeemed for discounted travel or merchandise. As well, these cards offer cash back rebates for purchases made with select retailers otherwise known as statement credits. But these perks don't offer much value unless you pay off your purchases right away. That's because the value of the rewards can be easily negated by the interest charge on any outstanding debt that you owe. And currently, the average interest rate on credit cards is nearly 23%. That's the highest it's been in decades. At that rate, paying off a credit card balance of $1,000 with monthly $50 payments will cost you nearly $273 in interest alone. So the rich and wealthy will always avoid that and the extra costs accrued for the temporary use of the borrowed money. So I would keep that in consideration. In comparison, rewards points are commonly only worth about one cent for each dollar spent, which means that spending $1,000 will earn you about $10, much less than what you'd owe in interest if that spending was carried as an outstanding balance for many months at a time. And selecting a rewards credit card that matches your spending habits is ideal. Rewards cards typically offer bonus points for spending on specific categories like dining or travel. For instance, American Express's Platinum card offers five points per dollar spent on travel and one point per dollar for all other purchases. However, unless you're spending thousands of dollars on travel, the redemption value might not justify the annual fee, which is currently $695 for Platinum card holders. So to ensure your card is worth the annual fee, check your credit card statements to see how much you actually spend on different categories like dining, groceries, or travel. Then compare that with the bonus categories offered by the card. And if your card's rewards categories don't align with how you spend your money, consider canceling it or switching to a new card that offers better rewards value for your spending. So one simple and easy rewards credit card hack is using the card's statement credits or welcome bonus to offset the annual fee. And many cards currently offer one-time welcome bonuses worth 100,000 rewards points if you sign up for their card And these 100,000 points can be worth $1,000 or more depending on how they're redeemed. So that can easily offset the annual fee and in some cases even for a few years. The other consideration is statement credits and other perks, which can change in any given year. For instance, American Express's Platinum Card has a hefty annual fee of $695, but the statement credits are currently worth more than $1,500 for select purchases, not including other perks like lounge access or exclusive reservations for restaurants. Yearly rebates for the card currently include $200 back on select hotels, $200 for airline fees, and a $155 credit for Walmart Plus, $200 in credit for Uber, and so on and so forth. And pay close attention because select purchases is the key phrase here. If you don't use Uber or shop at Walmart or spend money on any other rebate that adds up to the same cost as the annual fee, then you might want to rethink whether the card is worth the yearly cost. And if you do switch to a new card, just make sure you're not chasing welcome bonuses with unnecessary spending, since they're usually contingent on spending thousands of dollars within the first few months of receiving the card. In addition to rewards credit card arbitrage, also finding ways to supplement your social security check will go a very long way. So in June of 2022, the SSA reported the average monthly social security check totaled just over $1,540 a month. That number is obviously much lower than any cost of living measurement. So finding ways to supplement your social security benefits can give you a little financial breathing room, especially if you're considering early retirement. And in the gig economy, there are part time side hustles and ways to make extra money for everyone. Earn pocket money by simply filling out surveys, testing products or delivering for DoorDash a few times a day. Up your passive income by offering storage space through Neighbor.com or ShareMySpace. Sell some items you've been meaning to get rid of on Facebook Marketplace. There are so many opportunities. Whatever you can do to claim some extra cash, go for it. Every penny counts. And so the bottom line is this, folks. This year, 
you can make the most of your extra money from the Social Security Administration, the SSA, by assessing your spending habits, capitalizing on deals, and earning money with the occasional side gig. Together with your increased Social Security payment, rewards, credit card bonus points, and cash back bartering, strategies like these will help you retain your purchasing power in tricky financial times, which are sure to present themselves in the very near future. And however unfortunate it may seem, we must understand that even though the CPI is the main metric the SSA uses to measure inflation, it doesn't always offer the most up-to-date or accurate information. Most problematically, it gathers data only from businesses with physical storefronts, which means it's definitionally behind the times as a vast majority of business is being conducted virtually online and via websites and apps like Amazon and Walmart.com. And so as a result, the CPI doesn't necessarily reflect the reality on the ground inflation, which means that COLA increases based on the CPI are rarely as high as they need to be. Plus, the annual adjustment is meant to match the inflation rate at the start of the year. So it doesn't consider potential changes over the next 12 months and will always pretty much be a few steps behind the actual true costs and prices that we see and have to pay every day. Comment below if you were receiving Social Security benefits when the 5.9% adjustment came through in January of 2022, because you know that start of year adjustment wasn't nearly high enough to cope with the upcoming inflation spike that we experienced last year. Coming up next, Important information and ideas to consider if you're already collecting Social Security and planning on coming out of retirement. And if you frequently shop at Walmart, you're going to want to pay very close attention to your cart totals when ringing up at the self-checkout and make sure you review your receipts because it has been reported on multiple occasions and Walmart admits it accidentally charged certain customers twice for purchases and mysterious items costing them lots of money. And nobody needs to be wasting money right now in this economy. Am I right? And I'm pulling together new information and I will be releasing future updates on benefits, aid packages, Social Security, SSA, disability, SSI, and SSDI, EBT, food stamps, PEBT allotments, free money through government grants, and other supplemental stimulus programs coming and so much more. Please subscribe to the channel and give this video a like. Turn on notifications and comment down below. I would really like to get to know you all and discover more ways that I can provide you with the most accurate, up-to-date, and helpful information and new videos to see you gain access to additional resources to help cope and survive through these tough and difficult financial economic times. Until next time, folks, you all take care and be safe.